I've been saving this this painting for quite a while. In the past couple summers, I've been trying to get to Alaska to see this in person, but haven't quite been able to pull it off. So I thought I'd go ahead and do it. I wanted to film it myself and then paint it and just and turn it into a huge painting, maybe oils. But um, yeah, this is that iconic view of a whale tail. And this is a, a diving humpback whale. And I'm sure you've seen you know photos or paintings like this before, but I've never done it, so I wanted to go ahead and, and do my version of it. The background is set in Alaska, like a Juneau or a Seward or one of those uh, hotspot areas for this. And it's a temperate rainforest, so it's it's almost always raining. It's almost always foggy. It has these dramatic, dramatic Alaskan mountains that, that drop right into the ocean pretty much. So I wanted to have that, that whole scene. So a large, detailed humpback whale tail as it's diving, water running off it, that whole that whole iconic type type view and then the background I wanted to base off of those areas in Alaska. Um, so adding that that underpainting, that, that gray blue underpainting, I think really helped set the color tone for this painting and I don't always underpaint but this one I thought it was really beneficial. And then you know usually this is a, a late spring early summer when they start to arrive. You know, humpbacks, orcas, and, and gray whales will arrive in these areas. And in summer there's going to be you know those mountains and those mountain forests it's it's going to be there's going to be a lot of vegetation. They're not going to be dead. A lot of evergreens, things like that. So I wanted to add a bit of green into these mountains so that they weren't just a gray suggesting rock or brown suggesting dirt. I wanted it to be kind of a blue green, a dark, dark blue green with a bit of snow still on the peaks. And then I added a, a cloudy overcast sky because like mentioned before, that's, you know, 90% of the time, that's, that's what the, the sky's gonna look like. It's almost always raining. So I had an overcast sky a bit of greenery suggesting summer mountains, still a little bit of, of snow, and that humpback whale tail being the main the main showcase of this painting. So I really had to had to nail that. You just saw that switch where it went from base layer to this, which is already you know, well along in the painting and uh, it went from 2D to 3D there real fast. And I missed like an hour of, of painting, the most important part right there, really bringing it to life, bringing, making everything come together. So I'm kicking myself on that, but that's, that's part of the game on here. That happens all the time where my hand's in the shot or a battery dies or someone calls or, or I thought I pressed play and I didn't. So forgive me, but that's what happened here. And uh, I'm frustrated because this ended up being a great painting and I can't make a tutorial for the members out of it. I can't do a full length step by step tutorial on it because I missed the most important part. But anyways, I went in with the airbrush and really added that, that sea fog to break up the horizon line. I think that added a lot and just gave a slight covering to those mountains. So now it really is looking like an Alaskan or Norwegian type scene. We got the sea fog, the summer mountains with just a little bit of snow on top, overcast sky, and then that humpback whale tail. And really, the, the difficult part was making that tail look wet and look real realistic. The way to do that is really just 
patience. So using a small brush and just putting in hundreds of dots in the right spot to make it look like that tail is wet and it's just little glistening, reflecting water drops. So that was the main challenge really was highlighting certain parts of the tail to show 3D areas like you can see right there on the spine that, that, men are, that middle spine in the tail where there's highlights, bright white spots right on the top of that spine and then to the sides of it it's a little lighter it's like a, a dark black but a bit of gray just to show that that spine popping out and then where it drops down to the fluke this, this really wasn't as difficult a painting as I was prepared for it to be. I thought it would be a lot harder than it was, but this was just a fun, pretty smooth painting. And you know, this will to hold me over till I get there. But yeah, then to add these water drops and add some motion and, and movement, um, this is the same thing. Just kind of erratic dots and streaks, and just staying patient. It's tempting just to make solid lines connecting the surface of the water to the tail. But if you take your time and just add a bunch of little dots, scrub it out, add brighter dots on top, and really just take your time and add all the little dots that these reflections truly require to give a wet look. If you add chunks of color, blend it out, streak it, it's not going to give you what you want. You have to just kind of pay your dues here and add all those little tiny reflections that make up the greater whole. And then you'll get that realistic look like you could reach out and, gra and grab that tail. And then the water, I wanted to add enough detail in the water just to show that that nearest lower quarter has a bit more detail and is catching some of the grays and blues from the sky and just to make everything fit and work which again the underpainting helped here in that case but um, I didn't want too much detail in the water to pull away from the tail because your eye you're naturally going to stare at that tail and so that had to be the most detailed portion of the painting and yeah I'm happy with it I'm, I'm really happy with the way this came out and um, hopefully down the road you know, I can film this in person and then paint an even larger version so Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.